Deputy Eagle Donoghue. Uh, thank you, Chairman. I want to welcome uh, 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 Deputy Adams to the House um, and bring to his attention and to the attention of the Committee a leaflet that Sinn Féin is circulating at the moment called Sinn Féin Austerity Isn't Working. There's a nice picture of Deputy Adams here in the middle of us and it contains many of the arguments that he's detailing here. But I want to draw the attention to everybody to a back panel here entitled What the Experts Said. And there's four quotes on it. And what I want to read is read the quote out and then read what the same person said in relation to this stability treaty. The first quote is from Jack O'Connor, who is advocating a particular point of view. The next quote is from Carl Whelan, Professor of Economics at University College Dublin. And the quote from Sinn Féin on this leaf that reads as follows. The economics of this treaty are pretty terrible. What the leaf does not do is in the text from which this is from, the same sentence reads, the economics of this treaty is pretty terrible. I think that, on balance, the arguments favour Ireland signing up to us. Okay? So the continuation of that sentence is are, are the arguments favour Ireland signing up to us. The next quote is from Colin McCarthy. The quote is, as an exercise in addressing the Eurozone's twin banking and sovereign debt crisis, the fiscal compact makes no worthwhile contribution. Uh, colleagues, that is from an article on Sunday Independent on the 23rd of April. In the same article, Professor uh, Mr McCarthy goes on to say, in relation to the treaty, but it is the correct response, unavoidable, and in the country's best interests. The article goes on to conclude with, there's no conceivable strategy which involves running large budgets indefinitely, and opposition politicians who pretend otherwise are throwing sand in the eyes of the electorate. The third economist you quote from, Seamus Coffey, the School of Economics in UCC, and again you quote from a text where he makes as an exercise in addressing address the Eurozone's, um, excuse me, had the fiscal compact been in place since 1999, it could not and would not have prevented the crisis in Ireland. The same Seamus Coffey, in a contribution right after that, goes on to say, if the treaty is rejected, we'll be forced to adhere to the budget rules anyway, but will have been denied access to the new European Stability Mechanism bailout fund. We cannot avoid the fiscal rules and the treaty. All in all, there's little to be gained from rejecting the treaty. So every one of the economists that you quote from, in advance of your cause, goes on to say we acknowledge the difficulties, but it's in Ireland's best interest to pass the treaty. You deliberately misquote them, you selectively represent them. You hear in the, your contribution here uh, accused the government of misrepresenting the case in relation to the treaty. You talked about the approach to the campaign that's needed. In your own leaflet, which has been circulated in that nationwide, in support of this, you misquote, misrepresent economists who say, despite difficulty with the treaty, it's in Ireland's interest that it be passed. Three out of four people on this leaflet, which you're you. circulating, Thank you, say it should be implemented. And I buzz it to you, Deputy Adams, that the reason you are doing this is because there's a black hole in the centre of your argument. The black hole is you can't answer how, in the context of a no vote, our hospitals, our schools will be funded. Okay. And the only option you therefore have is, as this leaflet demonstrates, is to misrepresent impartial experts. Thank, thank you, Deputy. And I call upon you in this meeting Deputy. to withdraw this leaflet and acknowledge the, the deliberate misrepresentation that's taken place here. Thank, thank you, Deputy. Deputy Adams. Yeah. Well, to deal with Pascal's uh, point first, uh, this isn't being distributed nationwide. It's been distributed across this state. The nation is bigger, Pasco, than this state. Secondly, perhaps if I can observe then, it's the people who are voting on the treaty are having to leave it circulated to them. And, and, and the more the merrier. Uh, and secondly, you cannot deny that these three eminent people who obviously wouldn't subscribe to the Sinn Féin position on many uh, issues, did say 
The economics of this treaty are pretty terrible, and then went on to make their judgment on what should be done with it. But they did say, had the fiscal compact been in place since 1999, it would not and could not have prevented the crisis in Ireland. He said it. He then went on to say whatever he said in uh, well, terms of sorry, that sorry, the treaty should be passed. Well, but the fact is, he made a judgment on it. Let's, let's hear, let's, Deputy, pa, the, 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 Deputy, let's, let's hear the answer from, there's several questions for Deputy Allen, so let, let's, let's give the Deputy uh, a chance to respond. Or they did say, as an exercise in addressing the Eurozone's twin banking and sovereign debt crises, the fiscal compact makes no worthwhile contribution. Now, perhaps when we come round to the next round of questions, you could explain to me how the fiscal compact makes a worthwhile contribution to addressing the Eurozone's twin banking and sovereign debt crisis. Perhaps you could tell me uh, if you think that this fiscal compact could have prevented the crisis in, in Ireland. Or perhaps you could tell me that the economics of this treaty are pretty good instead of, as Carl Whelan has said, pretty terrible. Because that's not the case. That's yes, the, sorry, the hold on. Now, so, sorry, so, say again. As I said, each of the economists that you here. quote here Possible, are balanced. This is, this is, the contributions, can I remind deputies that contributions will be through the chair and at the moment the floor is with Deputy Adams. Well, well, first of all, through the chair, I do acknowledge that. But what I've drawn to your attention is that they have made a value judgment on the treaty. They then go on to make uh, their view of what should happen to the treaty. But, but the important thing is the value of judgment of the treaty. The economics are pretty terrible. It would not have prevented the crisis. And it makes no worthwhile contribution to addressing the Eurozone's twin banking and sovereign debt crisis. Now, when we come round again, perhaps you would, because I'm here to listen as well, uh, and listen to a bit of sense. Uh, we discussed the Sinn Féin leaflet instead of a treaty. Secondly, in terms of the other, the other points, I, the, the leaflet is on the treaty, and you're at, these chair, people are advocating. I, 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 I have to say, Chair, you know, everybody knows the rules of this. You know, this man was chairing a meeting 